joining me now is the man, the myth, the legend. Did I just say that? Did I just give him props like that? How much do I owe you for that? How much do I owe you? I want a side of ribs. <laughs> I want a new car. <laughs> I want a check in the mail. But you know, everybody who knows this man knows he is my main man, one of my, my, my best friends in this area. Uh, he is Barrett Brooks. He and I have done a lot of damage talking football throughout the years. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, Barrett, it's always good to sit and, ch and chop it up with you talking about the Eagles schedule. You've had time now to digest this 2021 schedule. First of all, what jumps out first and foremost to you about this schedule? Man, when they enter it and when they leave it, yep. the Alpha and Omega, the front and the back of that schedule is 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 is, is crazy, bro. I mean, you you begin the season with with you know three very four very good teams. You know, yeah. say yeah. what you want to say. This Falcons team is not going to be a pushover. Everybody's okay. saying it's going to be you know a, a, an easy win. I'm not seeing that, man. You know, yeah. they have Pitts roaming around in the middle of that offense. You I mean you have you know Julio Jones? You 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 have you know a bunch of really good offensive of players out there yeah. that could that can play, man. And I don't think it's going to be a walk in the park. So this is going to be a test for this Eagles team. Um, you know. At the end of the day, this is going to be an indoctrination of a, of a new head coach, a new offense. They're going to have to go out there and impose their will on the team. They're not just going to lay over. You know, they got a new coaching staff also. Yeah. Their defense sucks. Our defense may suck. Yeah. So I don't know. You know what I mean? It's, this is going to be the battle of, 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 of two teams that aren't really slated to do much this year. But this could be a leg up on the Eagles, you know, really going out there and showing what type of team they are, learning how it is to be in the NFL, rookie head coach. You know, at least this quarterback, Hurts, goes in with an offensive line that can help him, all his complimental weapons. I want to see if you give him the reins of a team that's, that's you know, effective enough and, and you know, and played together enough yeah. to go out and execute an offense. I want to see what he can do, man. The, the thing is, right out of the gate, Nick Sirianni gets the Atlanta Falcons. Then he gets the San Francisco 49ers. And you know, healthy, be a lot healthier. Yes, healthy. Was, especially that defense. That defense was like a defense of pit bulls, man. Once man. they come down on you, they don't let up. I mean, that defense exactly. played that team a couple of years ago. Well, when you look at it, man, they, they, they got Nick Bosa back. Their first yeah. rounder from two years ago. Yeah, he was out last year, so he's a little he's a little pissed off that he didn't play last year. That's so right. he's going to be chomping at the bit, ready to go out there and rock and roll. He's going to be ready to hunt, you know. And 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 Armstead on the other side, he's pretty Ooh. good too. So you're you know, and in the middle of that defense, a rookie from last year, uh, Javon Kenlaw. Yeah. He can rush, man. I mean, he's a total player coming out of um, I think it was NC State. I mean, he can he can play and he can take it to another level. So, you know, this team right here, you know, with 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 D Ford coming off the bench on passing downs, they can come out here and play. And the Eagles better be ready to rock and roll. I mean, it's it's, it's one of those things where this is gonna show me the mentality of the Eagles team. Cause the 49ers are gonna want to come punch you in the mouth. Yeah. Can you take it? You know, yeah. everything is all good until you get punched in the face. How do you react after that? And I don't care about Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't care about Trey Lance. I want to see the physicality of this Eagles team yeah. going against this 49er team. This is where you know what type of team you have. Can you get punched in the face, get back up, and punch back? Or are you going to cry, pick up your marbles, and go home? This is where I want to see how this coaching staff gets his players ready to rock and roll. It's cool and all and everything. Hey, you know, hey, you know, I love ball players. You know, they got to love ball. I want to see somebody get punched in the face, get back up, and start punching back. That's what I want to see. See, and then after they take on that rugged 49ers team, they've got to lick their wounds and, and put rubber bands and gauze and super glue <laughs> on what hurts and get right. ready for a Monday night trip down to Dallas. And, you know, you can say what you want to say about the Dallas Cowboys. You know, Dak Prescott is coming off a gruesome injury. Okay. Yes, yes. But we also know we've seen gruesome injuries in the NFL, and we've seen players come back from them time and time again. Now Dak is armed with a new $160 million contract. Okay? And look at what he's coming back to to throw to. Loving life right now. Because, I mean, you look at the weapons that he has. I mean, come on, Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup. That's your boy, Michael Gallup from Colorado yeah. State. You loved yeah. him from the beginning when they picked yeah. him up. And C.D. Lamb? Yes. Come well, on, man. about Cedric Wilson. Uh, 
ah, da, da. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is this is gonna be this 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 is what I live life for. Watching this Eagles team play against top notch players. Yeah. I mean, Lyle Collins is coming back. You know, he was their starting right tackle. You know, okay. last, not last year, but the year before last, he was hurt last year. Yep. Zach Martin's back. Um, uh, Tyler, what's his name? Um, Be- Bedez, I, I forget it. Bedez, something like that. The star center. This is another year under him. Yeah, this is another year under him. Then you know, the, Connor Williams started yeah. at, at left guard. He started all last year. Yep. These guys are ready to play. And you know, Tyron Smith, he always ends the season healthy. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's not until after you know, like the ninth or tenth game that he falls out. But he's going to be healthy for that third game against this Eagles team. And this is where you know, this is where the men stop playing around and and and, and buckle it up. And that's when you gain an identity on who you are as a team. This is where you find out who you are as you go forward. Because you know the plays that you run well. You know the plays you don't run well. You know, other teams have seen what you've run well. They know what you don't run well. So that means they're going to be game and planning against the complement of what they've seen and the tape that they've seen. But you're also countering them and, 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 and you know, showing who you are as a team. I, this is where you gain your identity from this point forward. This is when you're going to be doing everything that you're going to do for the rest of the season. So, man, I love when they get into their third and fourth game because when they turn this, you know, turn it up, and then identity it comes to fruition. I want to see what type of Eagles team this is. I mean, I'm hoping it's a physical, tough team, you know, and not a team that just loves ball. I need more than that. Week four, first Sunday of October. You know who's coming to town? Andy Reid. I'm going to get a ham sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Reid. That's your boy. The Super Bowl the last two years. You know, I love Big Red. You no know, question. Big Red and I, we chat periodically during the offseason and even during the season. Um, he's coming to town. They want That's crazy. He used to call you all the time, but we were sitting there at our desk. I know, huh? You get a call from Big Red. I'm like, oh, bro, how are you just getting a call from Big Red like that? And he Andy Reid just calls you. Hey, one year he sent me a care package from Kansas City from some barbecue, Jack Stacks Barbecue. <laughs> what else do I need? Right? right? I mean, we're literally sitting there, and he calls you. You know, I, I don't have any coaches call me. I played 12 years in the NFL. Nobody calls me like that. Well, you got he a parole calls. officer that calls you. <laughs> see why I don't like him, y'all. See, that's this guy right here. Don't trust him. Don't trust him. I'm telling y'all, don't trust him. But yeah, man, you're right, man. Big Red's in town, bro, and he's gonna unleash that offense. Yeah, and man. is this yeah. defense ready to play? But yeah. we don't even know what Gann is gonna run. That's number right. one, right? You know, so if you don't know what they're gonna run, um, is it gonna be an aggressive defense? We all saw what happened last year and the year before that and the year before that. You know, if, it, if the front four didn't generate pressure, you know, Swartz didn't like to really send a lot of guys because he didn't trust the DBs in the backfield. Well, right. they still not trusting the DBs because they didn't draft enough or do what enough. Back there now? Well, it's, <laughs> Seriously. Come on, man. I mean, who's going to play? That's what I'm saying. You're right, man. You're right. But, well, you, you know, got Rodney McLeod, you got Anthony Harris, you got Darius Slay. Huh? Uh, All right, you got Darius Slay. What? You got Avante, you got Avante Maddox. Wait, Avante Maddox, he, they need to move him back to the slot, man. I'm well, they're going to have to. But who are they going to play at the wide corner? I don't know. See, that's the question. See, I think he's going to be a starter until they get uh, on the outside opposite Darius Slay until they can get somebody ready to assume that role. But getting ready might take two, three, five weeks. Well, see, then that's the problem, you know. I mean, I I, I did like their draft pick uh, in the fourth round. I mean, I, I, I like – Yeah, McPherson is – he actually started out at Penn State. Yeah. Um. He 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 has some skills, man. I I you know I'm gonna tell you the truth. I was not watching him necessarily breaking out film on him. Right. But there is a quarterback, uh, Howard, at Kansas State right now, who's a local kid from from here in Philly. You know, on the outskirts of Philly, a Bucks County kid. So he's starting for Kansas State. So I'm watching film on him, and he's going against Knowles, a pretty good wide receiver at Kansas State. Right. And I saw him rerouting Knowles. I saw him sitting back in zone. I saw him making plays, being very physical to the line of scrimmage, coming up and making plays in the run. He could drop back in covers. I saw a lot of good things from him. But it's a reason why he got drafted in the fourth and not in the first. Mm. You know, if you want a guy to go out there and give you, you know, number one reps against number one DB, I mean, wide receivers, you got a DB that was drafted. You got to have one that's drafted at, at, at that level. That's right. You know, it's hard to find – you know, that diamond in the rough all the time. Why not go out there and invest in a guy, you know, early in the draft? Right. I mean, I I I I I love offensive linemen, but I really think in the second round we should have got a big time DB yeah. the opposite of Slay. You know, yeah. but since we're not, we're gonna be going against Tyreek Hill, you know, McCole uh Hardman. Come on, man. You know, Byron Pringle, Kansas State guy, straight speed. 
four three guy. Mm. Those that's three guys right there. Yeah, that run four three forties, and Tyreek Hill runs a four two forty. No, I think Harbin runs a four two also. Four two, I think it was four two five or something like that. Right. So you know we're talking about straight speed at three spots in the in, you know that the secondary is going to look at. But then you have that guy. That man roaming around the middle of the field, all he does is keep the sticks moving to catch first downs and touchdowns yeah. Yeah. at Travis Kelsey. I mean, come on, man. Then you just have the number one quarterback in the league in Patrick Mahomes. Do the Eagles have a snowball's chance in hell? Yes. I would yeah. say not. I would say not. Anything would... can happen on any given Sunday. We've seen it. You played the game for 12 years. You know that, man. And I've also yeah. got my butt kicked against people. That's on true. any given Sunday. That's true. That's true. You know, um, they, they go down after the KC game, they go down to Carolina and they take on Matt Rule. Now, Matt Rule, very innovative offensive mind. He's yep. got a year on his belt now. They've made some adjustments. They've made some additions. Uh, you know, Christian McCaffrey, you, you, you assume he's going to be healthy. He wasn't healthy in 2020. Uh, they got, you know, some good wide receivers down there. Um, it, it's going to be interesting. You know, so who's the quarterback now? Sam Darnold? Sam Darnold will be I mean, so that I mean I think that was a pretty good trade. They went out and got somebody they know can play. Yep. Sam Darnold, he will be around an offensive mind, so it'll be a lot better than him going up there with crazy eyes with the yeah. Jets. You know, he'll be able to go out there and play. Um, I mean, you, you you're talking about you're talking about a team that they're on the they're on the blocks right now. They're 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 in a position where they have to do more from an offensive standpoint. They did next to right. nothing last year. Can right. DJ Moore um, make something happen? Can, you know, Robbie Anderson, we know he's a fast guy. He's a 4-3 yeah. guy. Can he, you know, get open in the field? David Moore is a, a reliable receiver, you know, coming from Seattle. You know, I, I don't know, man. You know, I, I like, you know, what they have from the running back position. You know, of course, Christian McCaffrey does everything for He's a jack of all trades. Can he stay healthy? Yep. Against this Eagles team, the, the, the big thing that I'm looking forward to seeing is right. how that offensive line sticks together. If they can stay healthy – they can beat up on anybody in the league. I mean, anybody in the league. They're one of the top five offensive lines in the league if they're healthy. If they go in with, with you know, laying it at, at right tackle, Brooksy, yep. right yep. guard, yep. Kelsey, Sayamalu, and I'm not going to say Diller. I will never think Diller's going to be a starter for this Eagles team, not yep. at the left tackle position. Yep. I think they're going to go Jordan Malata. That's a pretty good starting five. In fact, Jordan Malata – it really shocked me in the Dallas game that he really turned it around. And like, all right, if I put my hands on people, I can yeah. really hurt people. And from that point on, that's exactly what he did. He started reaching out and touching people, and it helped his game go to another level. So, I mean, if he can go on and keep playing the way he's playing, he could be a pivotal piece uh, on that offensive line, and they can start pushing people around. And you protect Hurts. Hurts can make a difference, man. I think he's a good enough quarterback to move that offense he gives you a little bit from a um, from a you know an athletic standpoint too as a dual threat. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to stop that team, and they have straight speed now everywhere at the wide receiver position. There is speed. I'm trying to think of the slowest guy. The slowest guy is J. Jaw. That's the slowest guy in our in our um our offensive repertoire at the wide receiver position. Will Everybody he, else that runs he, four threes four on the team this year. Well, that's me. That's he's got to get it going. Because I mean, I look at this right fact. Let me let me pull that roster up real fast. Because I'm I'm really intrigued by you know the speed that this Eagles team has right now. Well, I mean, they, they can they can run with just about anybody in the league, you know. So let me look up their speed. Because I mean, we've been lacking speed for so long that you know it's it's almost as like you know we 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 say it and we we don't believe it, but we do have speed there. We right, have right. a lot of speed there. You got a lot of speed. But you have a lot of inexperience, also. Young speed, yeah. <laughs> you got young speed that's going to have to, let's say, take their lumps along the way. Now, Jalen Rager, who was supposed to be this speedster who could get separation, we didn't see that in 2020. Was it because of him, or was it because of the overall situation with the offensive line slash quarterback? That's exactly that's what it was. Okay. You can't blame that. You you, you really okay. can't blame that on them. That's why I'm asking. See, that's why I'm putting it out there. So you have Quez Watkins. We saw a sliver of the kind of speed he's capable of having. That's for, that's virtually four three. That's four yeah. three all day. Four three one, almost four yeah. two. When he gets an open field. Okay. Devonta Smith, we know what he's capable of doing. Okay. He might be the slowest guy. Yeah. At, <laughs> at, at four four. 
Yeah, four four. Yeah. All right. So now you have a quarterback who's got to learn a, an entirely new offensive system. And I think you know you miss a lot of valuable time when you don't have that uh, on the field time when you're talking about the offseason workouts. Obviously, you can make it up in OTAs, mini camp, training camp. You know, you got one less what one less uh, preseason game, two less preseason games now. Uh, so you can make it up, but you're going to have a crash course because as I mentioned to John McMullen a short while ago, when Jalen Hurts took over that offense, you know, first of all, he almost shot Green Bay, but all of a sudden Green Bay made adjustments and shut him down. The next game he comes back, he shocks the world and beats the New Orleans Saints. But then the two games after that, he struggled because coordinators made adjustments to defend against him. Now you have four, basically four game tapes on Jalen Hurts. Now he's not going to be in a Doug Peterson offense moving forward. He's going to be in this new, unknown Nick Sirianni offense. So I'm waiting to see how Nick plays to his strengths uh, to enhance his productivity and durability and hopefully dependability with his Eagles football team in 2021. I'm going to tell you the truth, D-Gun. They have a legitimate shot of being a lot better than we um, give them credit you know, for. Yeah, so because I, I mean, I, I, I just did a little, little um, a mock schedule, not really a mock schedule, but a prediction of the schedule. And I looked went and went through the games step by step, right on NBC Sports, right Philly, and um, I, I, I said that they, they could possibly win eleven games. Did you hit your head? Yes, I did. But you come on. I've always been a homer. You know I'm a homer, man. You I know, know I'm a homer. You know I'm, I'm a homer, man. I'm putting him right now. I, you can't even say nine and seven anymore. I'm putting him at nine and eight right now. <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe 10 and seven. Maybe. Maybe. And here's the thing. They have the easiest schedule uh, in 2021. Their opponent's combined record. Winning percentage was four hundred. It was four thirty uh, percent. Okay, they are facing of the new seven coaches in the NFL this year. They are facing four of the new head coaches in the NFL this year. Okay, now Dan Campbell's been a head coach before, but you're talking about Arthur Smith, who was the offensive coordinator at Tennessee, Robert Salah, who was an outstanding defensive coordinator with the 49ers, who now takes over the Jets. Brandon Staley, uh, he was the defensive coordinator. Great defensive coordinator for the Rams. He's now the head coach of the Chargers. So you're facing four new head coaches in new environments, new schemes, new mindsets. And I look at some of the teams that they're facing. The Atlanta Falcons are not going to be as bad as they were in 2020. The Carolina Panthers are going to be a better team than they were. The Raiders, you got to go out there and play John Gruden in Vegas. John Gruden's team is always going to play win, lose, or draw. They're going to play you to the hill. You know, and you don't know what happened. One day, one game they score 40 points and blow you out. Next game, they can't score a touchdown. You don't know which Raiders team is going to show up that given Sunday. Detroit, and eh, Detroit's a hot mess. D Detroit's just Detroit, man. You know, it's 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 ironic. I, I like Bill. I like I like man, I like Dan Campbell. I play with Dan. Dan's a okay. good guy, man. I play with Dan. I play with Deuce too. So uh, you know, they 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 don't know how to win yet. They can't win no, yet because no. they don't know how to win yet. No. I don't think the Chargers, I think the Chargers have a lot of talent. You know, the kid, Justin Herbert, if he comes back from that devastating knee injury, this was a kid who was breaking all kind of rookie records before he got hurt. Well, that's because he got beat up, man, with the offensive line. And that's what, but what did they do? They went and, you know, that's secured the offensive line with a guard to come in and play. That's and right. I like that pick. But I, I, I they, they were right on the cups of winning. Green. Yeah, they, you know, they were going to cups of winning. They, 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 they would have won last year if yes. their coach could have closed the deal. So yeah. I think they'll start closing the deal now with this new coach. And um, you know, like I said, Bosa's back. Yes. Uh, you know, this this another Bosa's back, man. And and you know, looking at the look at it, I think it's a possibility that they can beat that Chargers team. And yeah. I think it's a possibility they can beat the Lions team. And I really think they're gonna beat up on the Raiders, man. I mean, with that transient um, you know, uh stadium that they have, it's not gonna be it's gonna be people coming from other places. They'll like come to gamble and say, all right, let's go watch a football game. You know, they got a DJ booth and they got a club inside the that's right. You know, so what's, hey, what's wrong with that? It's the new look NFL. What's I wrong know. with that? Well, we do here they have the Cadillac Club inside, you know, the 76ers when they play. So, I, predict, hey. I predict 70 percent of the people in the stadium in Vegas will be Eagles fans. 70 percent. No question. No 70, question. It'll be like a home game for the Eagles. Yep. 
You're now right. That doesn't translate to a win, but it's, I tell you what, it does help when you got to go into enemy territory in, in a hostile environment. It's always nice to have that home back, you man. When you got to face an enemy on their turf, it's a difference, man. Because that's a beautiful stadium, bro. Ooh, that's a beautiful. Stadium. I know. I've, I haven't been there. Just looking at the pictures. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the pictures too. I, I haven't yeah. seen it either. Yeah. I'm looking from you know when they played those games last. I'm like, man, look at that stadium, bro. Beautiful stadium. Now you know when it comes to playing the Jets. Uh, Robert Salah is going to have them playing a whole lot better on defense. I don't know how that's going to translate to offense, especially playing with a rookie quarterback. Uh, that remains to be seen. He's going to take his lumps. And by the time the Eagles see the Jets, we're talking about, what, week 13, December 5th, week 13. So you you don't know what he's going to be like uh, in terms of is he the it factor? Could he be the next Justin Herbert? You know, it, it, could he be the next – who knows? Mediocre quarterback at that point? He's going to be trash. That's what he's going to be. He's gonna, it's the same old Jets, man. I don't care who they have what? as the GM. They are going to be trash, man. Come on, man. I'll, I'll Jack, record this. I'll record Zach this. Wilson. Zach Wilson was the fourth best quarterback in the draft. They picked him up number two. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like Elijah Vera Tucker. They got him in the first round. Right. Really good player. Right. Solid player at the guard position. They're going to help him out. You know, they got two huge tackles there. Right. You know, they're, they're going to be okay. Um, I, I can't see them going out there and running a rock like they, you know, like they need to. I mean, they got – all right, they got LaMichael Piron um, from, from you know, from Washington. You're right. Um, Tevin Coleman, you know, he just left San Fran. He was with Atlanta, went to San Fran, came here. Uh, you know, at, th- at this point, I can't see them going out and really establish run with the running backs that they have. So how do they – think that they're going to go in and make a real difference. Okay, on the offensive side of the ball, I still can't see where I can see them going out and really making a difference. I mean, Carl Lawson, you know. Yeah, yeah. He, he balled against us. I mean, he had like three sacks against us. He was like a yeah. no-name guy that had like three sacks against right, us right. last year. You know what I'm saying? So he comes in and gets a big contract and comes to uh, the Jets. Other than that, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to see where they are as far as defensively, where they can – really make a difference i don't see it maybe somebody does see it i can't see it it's going to be the same old jets he is not you know this what zach wilson is not talented enough to get those guys going in the right direction not just yet they did go out and get Corey davis from tennessee right we're talking about a big big time receiver you know he's big he, he can go out and catch anything you know that's, that's a good pickup for him you know but still you know you got denzel memes you know philly fans we still hate him you know talking trash about it because we didn't pick him up I mean, come on, man. He's talking about a dirty city. I was scared to get out. Pump, we don't want you here no way. You don't need to come <laughs> how, here. How do you really feel? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But we're going we gonna to get you. Yeah, we we got you. Oh, I hope somebody can get him. We got somebody to get him? Uh, I don't think we got anybody to get him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, right. look, here's, here's, here's the one team that I will be watching, the one Eagles opponent I'll be watching. And of course, uh, they come to Lincoln Financial Field November 21st, the New Orleans Saints. You know, we've grown so accustomed to the Saints winning double-digit games every year. But that was with a guy named Drew Brees. Right. <laughs> now it's either Jameis Winston or Taysom Hill. They have everything you need to win except a quarterback. What, what, what uh, my, my, my old man used to listen to, the thrill is gone. Yeah. B.B. King. <laughs> B.B. King, the thrill is gone. <laughs> One thing I do like about this Eagle schedule is that is, is that after that uh, Denver game on November 14th, they don't get on a plane again for the rest of the season. And I put out there when I was talking to John McMullen, that's a psychological edge for a lot of players who don't have to get on a plane, travel X amount of miles compared to getting on a bus or a train and going up and down, you know, I-95 or the turnpike. And people are like, why is that such a psychological difference? So I want you to explain that to people. So I don't want to misspeak. Well, it's, it's a psychological difference because, you know, you're playing in your vicinity. I mean, you can get up. You're still on the same time um, as, as you are when you're at home. And it, it is a decided advantage when, you know, you could just jump on a bus and go to Washington or jump on a train and go to D.C. Uh, you, you go right up the turnpike and go to Giants, you know, jump on a bus and be there in an hour and a half, two hours. You know, you're not worried about – Guys not being, uh, you know, you know, having having jet lag and things of that nature. You're just right. going up there, play a game. You can literally go up there the same day and come back as you're playing the same day. 
you know, and that and that's that's good. You know, that means more time you can spend getting ready for your opponents, number one. And the familiarity you have with the opponents that you're playing against, number two. Right. Right. The last four games of division opponents, and besides, you know, that Washington team, you're going to already have played them guys once already, so you know what they bring to the table. That's now, right. you're going to go against this Washington team who have a front seven that I think is the most dominant front seven in the NFL. I mean, the most dominant front seven. In, no, I mean, there's no question they can make things happen. They can rush the passer. Right. They can do everything you want from a from from a defense standpoint with that front seven. And they 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 really worry me because look how many first first rounders they have and guys that you know they're from Alabama in the SEC on the team, not just from the SEC, but from Alabama. Yes. On that uh on that uh, defensive front seven. So I go through it and I'm looking and I see, all right, Deron Payne from from Alabama. Jeez. Jonathan Allen. From Alabama, then you go SEC. Montez Sweat. Yes, you know, I mean, you got uh, you know, you got guys that can rush the passer from all these places, and you got to make sure you're ready to rock and roll with them. That's right. You got Matt Leon. I mean, uh, Ionitis. Uh, now he's a yeah. he's a Temple guy, but we're yeah. talking about a guy that feels as though he's been slighted his entire career. So because of that, he's coming at everybody because of that. And now, you got Jamon right. Davis go rush the passer from yeah. the outside linebacker position. And then we have Chase Gum. Chase right. Young. Ryan Kerrigan is a bench warmer now. <laughs> and that's crazy. Ryan hey, I, I look at Joe Krause. Joe Krause has jumped on. You know what that means, Barry? We've been running our miles too long. When Joe jumps on, when the boss jumps on, you know you're in trouble. Bro, right. I, you know I get excited when I'm talking to you, man. You know, I, 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 I didn't even see you up there, um, Joe. I didn't, my fault, man. I, you know, no, once no, I get no, really, really great, uh, really great stuff, Gunner. I'll give you a chance to wrap up in quick, a quick second, but I got Harry Mays and Aton Shander on deck, and you know Harry Mays is pissed off because he's waiting to get on. So, hey, you tell so. Harry, I said back up. <laughs> 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 no, but hey, look, man, it's been fun. Uh, Joe's always thank you for letting me hop on and talk what I love to talk about my, uh, most football with John McMullen and my man right there, Barrett Brooks. Uh, so thank you. And uh, for everybody out there watching, listening, commenting, thank you for hopping on and listening to D-Gun, Barrett Brooks, Joe Krause, John McMullen. And don't go away because there's a lot more giveaways coming up from Joe. Joe has promised me at least five or six jerseys. If not, I know where he lives. I'm going after him. <laughs> I'll get at least five or six jerseys and tickets. You know, when I got on this thing, I thought, OK, they're giving away tickets for the home opener. Then he threw, drops the bomb and said they have tickets for every game this season. So. I know I'm getting something out of this, Barry. You and I, we going to a game on Joe Krause in 2021. We got it, baby. We got it. You know, we got to roll, man. I've got, these guys act like I, it's very rare that I get on with D Gun. So I mean, of course I get the Rams, man. But hey, you cannot stop me. That's right. You cannot you can, stop. You me. can try, but you can you can you can try to stop us, but you can't. You can't do it. <laughs> hey, look, you guys have a great night. Good stuff, guys. Have a good night, bro. All right. Man. All right. Good stuff from D.